Hello friends, in a recent video that I filmed while on vacation in Florida, I asked you what did you want me to uh, talk about in upcoming videos and you gave me some great topics. One of them had to do with cycling a tank, tips about cycling a tank and, and the, uh, what to do if it's going to be a while before you put the fish in, uh, things of this nature related to the cycling of a tank. You can see the two questions that were asked here, both of them relating to the cycling and by cycling we mean a tank that that reaches a point where it is suitable to add fish because it has enough beneficial bacteria to neutralize the effects of ammonia and and uh, and nitrite and you so you have zero ammonia zero nitrite and some nitrate and then you have a cycle tank now a tank can go out of cycle we'll talk a little bit about that and how do you keep that cycle going and healthy, especially if you've got it cycled and it's gonna be a while before your fish arrive. Let's talk about that right now. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that my best way, my favorite way to cycle a tank is with a media that is available from an established tank. So for example, if you look underneath this, this 210 gallon South and Central American tank here behind me, it has, a, it has both a canister filter and also a sump. Let's look, let's look in the sump, I'll show you something. This is one of my DIY sumps and it's mostly sponges doing all the heavy lifting. You can see those thick, four inch thick sponges there. And in this chamber down here, what you'll see, I'll put some more light on it. That's media. That's media that goes inside of an expertmatic internal filter. So if I want to get an aquarium going, all I have to do is insert those sponges. Don't rinse them. You want them nice and, nice and dirty, full of beneficial bacteria. Insert those into an expertmatic. Drop the expertmatic into a tank where you have conditioned the water. Do not add it to a tank where you haven't conditioned the water because you'll kill the bacteria. And then fire it up and guess what? You have an instantly cycled aquarium. You have bacteria that's going to be neutralizing ammonia and nitrite. Probably a very common mistake that people make when getting an aquarium going is adding the uh, seeded media and using products like this, like Stability or or maybe uh, Fritzzyme, things like that, they'll, they'll make the mistake of, of adding it to an aquarium that hasn't been conditioned. As a result, the chlorine, chloramine, in the aquarium water kills off the beneficial bacteria, and then they think the product didn't work. The other mistake that is common is they'll take a product like this and that is expired. These products should have expiration dates on them, and you don't want to use them beyond their expiration date because they will then do nothing, nothing for your aquarium. Just two things to keep in mind. Another very important part of working with an aquarium that is being cycled or being brought about is to add fish right away. You add, uh, you, know, you add media, seeded media, and you let it sit for a long time and guess what? That, that bacteria is gonna starve. You're gonna starve out that bacteria. So this aquarium was set up and fish were added immediately. Of course, this was already an established tank with a lot of beneficial bacteria in the substrate, which is where I, what I tend to count on as the home of beneficial bacteria. But definitely when you use things like Stability or Fritzyme, don't wait. Add the fish right away so the fish start producing between the feeding of the fish and the fish waste, start producing the food necessary for, for that beneficial bacteria to live. So you have a tank, it's actually reading zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and maybe five to 10, maybe 20 nitrate, but there's no fish going into it. What do you do? 
Here's an example. This tank is set up and waiting for fish to arrive. Now I have in this tank, full disclosure, there's baby pleco. Not sure if we can find him or see him in here, but there's a baby pleco in here somewhere, probably inside that cave right there. Kind of serving as a uh, as a sort of bookmark, as a play, just trying to keep some some life in the aquarium. And there's also you'll notice some snails in here that are producing waste and feeding the bacteria that is in this substrate, in the sponges, and in the hang on back filters that are being used in this aquarium. Well, there he is at the top of that cave back there. He's just a little baby pleco that I couldn't catch when I was emptying out this aquarium and putting on nice size. So with an aquarium like this, let's say this aquarium was empty but it was cycled either through using a product like Fritz or Stability or putting in seeded media. All you would do is what is called ghost feeding. And what is ghost feeding? Ghost feeding is every now and then just add a little bit of food, you know, once a day, once every other day. Add a pinch of food, that food will decompose and then decomposing produce ammonia and that ammonia will feed, will feed the bacteria and keep it going. So you can do a little bit of ghost feeding in between and that will keep, keep things rolling. Some of you are old school and by that what I mean is you, you like to throw a piece of old, uh, of old shrimp Throw an old dead, throw an old dead shrimp in the aquarium, and and let that rot and create ammonia. And you know what? If that works for you and you're comfortable with that, go with that method. Do what what you're comfortable with, right? It's your aquarium. I like to use seeded media. I it, I've used seeded media in combination with products, which is probably a bit of an overkill. And I like adding fish immediately, but I add them gradiently. And by that, what I mean is I don't overwhelm the aquarium with 50 fish. I'll put maybe a half dozen, maybe wait a month or two, let the bacteria kind of catch up, and then add another half dozen. And let, let the bacteria sort of build up. The first few times I add fish to a newly cycled tank, I might add a little bit more of that stability or Fritz or Fritzzyme, just to kind of build up that bacteria. And again, the only mistake you can make with those products is not feeding it. And how do you feed it? You feed it by either phantom feeding uh, with you know, dropping some food in, or you would go ahead and add fish right away. So at any rate, starting up a new aquarium shouldn't include uh, losing a lot of fish. There's no reason to lose a lot of fish when you start a new aquarium if you follow these steps. It should be pretty straightforward and it should result routinely in a successful in a successful aquarium. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope that addressed some of the questions that you asked. Uh, I know starting up a new aquarium is a little scary, especially if you're adding some expensive fish right away. And I remember back in the day, uh, poor old black skirt tetras, that used to be the, the fish of choice. I'll throw a bunch of black skirt, skirt tetras in there. They'd put a little water conditioner in there and throw a dozen half skirt tetras and watch them sl slowly sort of die off. And when they stop dying off and they start surviving, okay, good, we've got a cycle tank. Uh, I, I'd rather not do that necessarily, use the uh, sacrificial fish method. <laughs> and in some cases, people will add uh, plants. And, and when the plants start to look real healthy, then they know that, uh, that the tank is cycled and able to sustain life. This would be a good example, like this tank back here is uh, very, a very, very good and stable environment for fish because you know, you've got a lot of live plants. So you've got that going on with the, with the discus too, right? It can be a little, a little more uh, touchy with, with uh, African cichlid tanks. Very often with African cichlid tanks, you don't have any plants unless you're running um, some plants in a sump, uh, you know, something like that. But like with these guys here, these are you know plant killers. They would they would uproot and destroy anything, any any live plants that I would put into this aquarium. So 
plants are not going to be an option and watching plants become healthy in an African cichlid tank doesn't become, uh, is not really an available option. So what do you have to do? You have to do just the, the regular cycling methods like I mentioned. You fill the tank up, you condition the water, you, you add seeded media uh, or products like, like Fritzyme or, or Stability and then you're good to go. And, but big fish like this can overwhelm can overwhelm the, uh, the amount of beneficial bacteria that you have because they produce a tremendous amount of waste. So you're, you wanna go slow if you're adding big fish, and by that what I mean, you know, add, add four to six, maybe in a big tank like this, big 300 gallon tank is very forgiving, and then start kicking it up from there gradually, and you'll end up, you'll end up with, a, with a rock solid, stable, stable aquarium with a very good population of beneficial bacteria that can support whatever, whatever you're doing. Now, you can also break the cycle, and by that what I mean is create an ammonia spike, and you can do that by messing with too much. Uh, there's two ways you can do it. You can, you can jack up the bio load too fast, and by that what I mean is you add too many fish too quickly, and you, you outrun the beneficial bacteria's ability to to convert ammonia into nitrite and, and then nitrate, it, it's, you just do too much and that can create an ammonia spike which can stress out your fish tremendously. Then when you test the water, the cycle has caught up and so your test results come back perfect and you're like, you're, you're scratching your head, you go, well, what happened? Uh, how, come, how come my fish died? My, my test results are perfect. Well, the, the beneficial bacteria caught up. And, but in the meantime, the ammonia, the stress from the ammonia and nitride killed, you know, killed the fish. So you can also, uh, like in a brand new unmature tank, like a tank that's under six months old, you can go ahead and let's say do the filters, uh, clean the filters and do a deep, uh, you know, a, a deep gravel uh, vacuuming and you just kill off a lot of beneficial bacteria. Then you'll get a cloudy tank. That's your first sign something's wrong. You get a cloudy tank after the water change and that means you have like a bacterial bloom but in the meantime while that bacteria is working hard to catch up you'll have an ammonia spike that will kill off your fish. Uh, I learned that lesson the hard way. So some things to keep in, in mind you can also go out of cycle or uh, have a destabilized tank by either kicking up the bio load too much for the bacteria to keep up or by destroying too much bacteria with uh, trying to be too clean and do too much maintenance at once. All right, so there you go. Those are my cycled aquarium tips. I hope they help. I hope they help you to maintain a, uh, a healthy ecosystem. These guys are all excited because they think I'm gonna feed them. They're getting all, all pumped up. But yeah, hope you have a healthy ecosystem and I hope these tips help. Thank you so much for watching and maybe I'll see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Central. And uh, don't forget to become a Patreon. Help the channel on a monthly basis by becoming a Patreon Garage Gang member. It starts for as little as $3 a month. The details are under the video in the description. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you, my friends. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.